In this video, I'm doing most of the things for the first time. The exterior distance between the support boards should be 34 inch. And those need to be mounted on studs. I have cut the boards one and a half inch longer. Leveling the board and marking where to drill. Made sure that the wall mounting bracket is level. Using structural screws with nuts. I extracted the unit by cutting the lower part of the box with utility knife. This was the sound of successful mounting. Securing the bottom part. This pressure relief valve comes with the unit. Some states require TNP valve. Max input BTU of the unit must be lower than the max input on the valve. Doing clockwise and trying to leave one-two threads untouched to minimize the chance of Teflon debris reaching the unit. Using plumb bob to help in finding the center of both exhaust and intake vents. I have a joist blocking the exhaust vent, let's fix it. Using a broom as location indicator. Measuring joist height. Using support so the joist will not fall. And there's that broom. I'm cutting the joist here and will support it with another. Done, going back. Since I don't have a clear way up, we'll have to shift right. For that I'm using a laser and plumb bob. Looky here, found the drill bit. Placing the door vent through flashing and cutting parry. Should have drilled vertically, we'll fix it shortly. See? Should have drilled vertically. Much better. The sealant requires minimum 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I made sure not to put it on the bottom, so condensate will have enough room to run out from. Securing the roof flashing and sealing. There should be a minimum of 3 feet from any opening. Using gaskets on both sides.
all pipes must have gaskets in them. Whenever the length is too long, I cut, remove the little thingy, using the right glue, and gluing it back. Fastening the screws for secure grasp. Fire stop. And fixing the damage. Green is safe, red is death. Making room for the cable. This is the outlet box. And this is the crawling space. Fishing the cable from the breaker box to the new outlet. White to white, ground to ground, hot to hot. Green is safe, red is death. Hot to the breaker. White and ground to the breaker box. Test passed. Fixing the damage. Closing the gas, cold water and draining hot water before removal. Removing leftovers. As you can see, the floor is in perfect condition, very straight and rot free. And that's the reason for replacing the water heater. I'm removing this gas line because it's half inch while I need three quarters. So apparently gas lines are removed from end to source, not from the middle. The valve was leaking, so I had to cut it as well. Using yellow gas tape. There should be minimum 3 inch sediment trap for this unit. Checking for gas leaks.
Using copper rather than PEX, as it's not suitable for connecting directly or within 18 inch of the water heater. This part is crucial before soldering. Not bad for the first time. I found out later that there are flame barriers. Well, next time. The following magic happens since check valves are not mandatory in the States. Water can go both ways. Opening the gas. Hot. Cold valves. And starting the unit to check that everything works. Using manometer to measure gas pressure. Then turning all the hot valves in the house, plus all the gas appliances for maximum consumption. Pressure should not drop below 4. Connecting condensate drain and making sure it's not leveled, so water can flow freely. Connecting Bosch neutralizer to break carbon monoxide before it drains. Using this construction so it will be easier to replace the neutralizer next year. To replace I need to open this. Total price without the tools around 2200, with the tools 3100, time taken 3 days. It was challenging, interesting and it's over. Thank you my dear wife for all the help and support.